Here's what I <laughs> What the fuck is a house hippo? <laughs> That should well, be the start of the video. Play again. Right? Charlie Hazel. Saying, what the fuck like... is a house? <laughs> That's just the start the of the episode. Open. Yeah. <laughs> That's it. Hi, everyone. How's it going? Happy January 10th. Happy, I don't know what the fuck's going on. Let's get started. I love you, make chapter 12. December 1968, or take a sad song and make it better. Fade in, music key, this is my country by the temptations. Title card, the love you make, timestamp. December 1968, <laughs> Hazel and Henry lean against their, the counter in the kitchen, both with cups of coffee in their hands. He has his arm around her as she rests her head on his shoulder. They stand like this for a moment in peace. She smiles as Charlie enters the kitchen. He looks over at them, then goes to the pot of coffee, grabs a mug, pours himself a cup and takes a sip, then turns and leans against the counter beside them. You guys are fucking loud. <laughs> we haven't made a sound. Oh, I don't mean right now. What? <laughs> oh. Oh, no. Uh, sorry. Uh, yeah, I, I don't. Um... Jim enters the kitchen. Good morning. I guess I should start getting ready for the day. Hazel starts washing dishes. Right, I'm going to, uh, yeah, I'm gonna go too, yeah. Did I miss something? <laughs> what? <laughs> Did someone put a sign on my back that says, kick me? What? <laughs> Hazel, what's happening? Did you hear any noises last night? Takes his coffee and leaves. Great start. In Diana's apartment. Do we want to talk about that scene or? <laughs> <laughs> Brutal. I'm to the so awkward. I want to die. Sad <laughs> and also kind of relatable. So. I think we you got should... some balls asking though. Oh, there's <laughs> Never. balls. Yeah, there's balls. <laughs> balls. Was that one also based on your own experiences, or? Uh, no. But thank you for asking. The end of their song plays on the, uh, Richard's song plays on the radio as he and Diana make their way into the apartment, dragging a Christmas tree with them, placed in the middle of the room, and step back. And there it is again, folks. The most requested song we've had in a while. Here's hoping we'll be hearing more from them in the future. Anyway, here's Hey Jude, another highly requested favorite from the Mop Top Fab Four. <laughs> Did you hear that? People really love me. They love your song, Rich. They don't know you. <laughs> they will soon. Will you help me put up the tree or not? Every time I hear it, I think, wow, that's a great song. And then I remember that I, that's my fucking song. I wrote it. Shit, man. <laughs> So what about all these new songs then? What's your plan with those? Well, I'll figure it out. Maybe I'll find the fucking mamas and papas in the street someday and throw them some lyrics. Stuff. You think they'd go for it? Like they could write better. You think you could write something better than California Dreamin'? All the leaves are brown, Diana. You say that now, just wait. You'll be writing for their next album. Yeah, what next album? I'd have better fucking luck writing for the Beatles. I'll just have to learn to play the sitar first. Glad you're really down to earth about all of this. Can we talk about me now? Yeah, yeah, for sure. Great. 
So I have some Should I bring ones. my songs to someone? Do you think anyone would actually want to hear my shit? I was talking. But sure, yeah. Do what you want to do. Cool. Right. Yeah. What were you saying? I think I cut you off. So I met someone at school. He's very nice. Oh shit, Die, that's great. I'm really happy for you. Who, who's this guy? His name is Stanley. Before you say something stupid, no, you don't know him. Would you like to meet him? I mean, before I introduce him to Troy and Annette. No, I'll just scare him away. I'll make sure he knows that if he fucks up, we're gonna have a problem. I've punched a motherfucker before, I'll do it again. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'll meet Stanley. <laughs> what a fucking stupid name, Stanley. Who names their kid Stanley anyway? Oh my God, shut the fuck up. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'll shut up. Good choice. Music cue hooked on a feeling by BJ Thomas. Hazel's talking to a customer towards the back of the store as Charlie cashes someone out of the front counter. The store is busier than usual as the Christmas rush begins. Hazel smiles at the customer and goes over to Charlie. Shouldn't we be playing Christmas music? Why? It's December, in case you didn't notice. Oh, shit. Is that why it's snowing? Yes, and as Bing Crosby said, I am dreaming of a white Christmas, and you playing Christmas music in the store would help that dream of mine to come true. No. Okay, Mr. Scrooge. I'll just go sing carols quietly to myself in the corner. Hark how the bells, sweet silver bells, all seem to say, you're an asshole. The phone rings at the front of the store. Charlie picks it up. Yeah. Yeah, that's me. Uh, well, kind of. Uh, sure. Y yeah, I'll call him and uh, yeah, that would be. Thanks. Yeah, thank you, sir. <clears throat> Hazel. CJ, you're getting really pale. Are you okay? That was a guy from Columbia Records. What the fuck? What? <laughs> Did you just hear what he said? Did you just hear that? That's that, that, that's crazy. Oh my God, Capitol Records. Columbia. Columbia Records, that's what I said. Oh my God. <laughs> Do you want to know why he was calling? You're just going to yell at a few more kids. Why did he call Charlie? He heard our song and wants to talk to us about more. More what? More chickens? More tambourine? More depressing life stories? We both have plenty of those. More music. Holy cow. Watch your language. Shut up. Do we have more music? Or does, does Rich have more music? Or, or, or have you even spoken to Rich? Or has anyone spoken to Rich? We can't do this without him. We need to make sure this is what he would want. We really need to figure out what we're going to do. So you need to talk to Witch. Otherwise, we have no hope of ever being successful. Unless they match us up with some of their staff songwriters. But they write monkeys jingles mostly. And I know you'd hate that. It would be successful, but corny and unmemorable. We need to be memorable, don't we? That's the end goal. At the end of the day, isn't it? To be remembered and successful, like a legacy of sorts. Something you can show your grandkids. <laughs> hey, hey, Hazel, did you leave Earth? Hmm? Yeah, sorry, my, 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 my wandered there for a second. Yeah. Oh my God, Rich. We were just talking about you, Rich. What a coincidence. Oh, I've missed you. How are you? Merry Christmas. Do you celebrate Christmas? Merry Christmas. <laughs> Hi, Hazel. Hi. Were are you saying about me? Were you mentioning my dashing good looks and my princely charm? 
no, I was just saying that we would be nothing without you. Guess who just called the guess? Go on. Guess Capital Records. Columbia. Capital Records just called us. Columbia. Columbia Records. That's what I said. Columbia Records just called the store. Holy shit. What did they what did they want, Charlie? <laughs> you. They want to talk to you about your songs. <laughs> What the fuck? <laughs> I'm so happy for you. <laughs> Did they say when they wanted to talk to me or should I just show up? Do I need a lawyer? I'll be your lawyer. Hazel, shut up. Charlie, can you go with me? What's your name again? I know we've met before. Who, who are you? <laughs> you know that advice you gave Hazel? Use it on yourself. Will you go with me, man? Yeah. Aw, friends! Let's go out and celebrate. I thought you said you'd never go out with me again. Evelyn sits in the nursery with its bright walls, rocking chair, crib. Meh. She looks around her, taking everything in, holding her stomach as Catherine walks into the room with a gift bag in her hands. Why are you just sitting there? It, it suddenly feels very real. Yeah, it's real. What did you think was up there? air, a bowling ball. How'd you get a bowling ball up there, Evelyn? Why do you say things like that? Because it bothers you. I got you something. I got it something. We need to stop calling it it. Evelyn opens the bag and pulls out a teddy bear. Why are you crying? It's so cute. It's a bear. I'm pregnant, Catherine. Everything makes me cry. I'm never having kids. You're a really good sister. I don't say that enough. You never say that. <laughs> well, just wait till I start buying your kid alcohol in high school. You wouldn't dare. Watch me. You see cue, seesaw by Aretha Franklin. Walter stands behind the bar, wiping down some glasses as Hazel stumbles over. Around them, the bar itself is busy, lots of drinking, dancing, the like. You get it at this point. She sits down on one of the stools and waves at Walter. Hi, Walt. Hey, Hazy. What can I get you? Who's Hazy? Oh, that's me. Hi, Walt. One more drunk for me, Walt. You got it. Hey, what are you doing over here, H? I was getting another drunk. Drink. I mean, drink. Drunk? Very. <laughs> another round for everyone, Walt. We're self painting tonight. <laughs> I don't think that's a word. Capo Records. Bitch. <laughs> Cool, cool. Uh, I have no idea what any of this means, but cool, man. I like the energy. I can dig it. I would like to propose a toast to us, the best band and songwriter the world has ever known. Take that, Bob Dylan. <coughs> Behind her, the door to the bar opens as Henry enters. He sees Hazel, Charlie, and Rich falling apart and stops. <laughs> Pop, be in this bar. He, he can hear you. You think Bob Dylan is getting drunk on a Tuesday night? Bob, show yourself. Hi, dear. You're not Bob. Henry, love of my life, what are you doing here? You called me 20 minutes ago and asked me to pick you up. Oh, yeah. I called you and I said, can you pick me up? Because I'm drunk and I miss you. That's disgusting. You're such a sap, Charlie. <laughs> How much have you guys had to drink? Much. Nice job, Downey. Very many. 
We should get you all home. Hey, we're celebrating. Celebrating. Capital records -y. Well, can you get Henry very many drinks so he could be just like us? Got a drink, man. Nah, I don't need anything. I'm fine. We should go. No. Stay. You're you a know, light of the party, man. <laughs> I've heard that before. Oh, yeah. Hazel told me you were in San Francisco. Tell me everything and don't miss a single fucking detail. Whiskey. I'll just take straight whiskey. A two music cue, Son of a Preacher Man by Dusty Springfield. Henry nearly slides right off his own bar stool as they all sit there with a few empty glasses around them. Carolyn and Roxy have also joined them. And I said, that's my friend's band. And he said, no way. I said, yes way. And he said, no, there's no way. And I said, fuck you. <laughs> the hero we all need, Carolyn Gage. Thank you. <laughs> uh, I like you guys. You, you, you get it. You get me. This is not who I expected to be hanging out with by the end of the year. But I'm okay with it. I like you guys. <laughs> Aww. I like you too, Charlie. I like all of you. You know what? You guys should all come to my New Year's party. I like a good party. What kind of party? A party kind of party. And you guys can all bring plus ones. Henry's my plus one. <laughs> <laughs> Don, Lois, and Fred enter the bar. Oh, shit. There's going to be a fight tonight. Someone call the local news. <laughs> Hun, babe, help. Hey, felons. Uh, fellas. Over here. What are you doing? Making the brunt bait. Hey, the band's all here. <laughs> nice one, man. That was jail, Mr. Ed. <laughs> nice one, man. What are you guys doing here? We came for a drink, but your guests are being very rude, Walt. Uh, the three of you need to leave. <laughs> Why? Uh, I heard a complaint. Uh, some of the guests were being rude. Uh, nice one, man. <laughs> you can't fucking kick us out. Yeah, who are you? Fucking cops? Man, I've dealt with them before. <laughs> and you ended up in jail, you motherfucker. Hey, all in a day's work, you country boy. Hello, I am the police. Uh, you have to leave. Impersonating the police is a felony, Walt. <laughs> You're a felony, Fred. <laughs> you guys are all fucked. Don't waste your breath. Come on. There's a bar on every corner. And they leave. Thanks, Walt. You're a hero. Hey, that's my pen! Hazel's all cozy up against Henry as they and Charlie stumble along. I'm very mild of a modern major general. I've information, vegetable, animal, and mineral. I know the king's England and I close the rice historical from something to Waterloo in order categorical. And now you sing. What the fuck did you just say? Hun, you said... Um, mm, mm. How much further, Charlie? I don't know. You'll know when you see McDonald's. Well, you know? That you've gone too far. Actually... <laughs> This might be it. Might be. It's a little wavy. <laughs> if you're wavy, I'm in the ocean. <laughs> Do you want me to go up with you? You can't walk. 
<laughs> I have two legs. I can walk. <laughs> Charlie pushes open the door to the apartment. He and Hazel stumble in. She takes his hand and leads him towards his bedroom. It's been a while since someone's led me to this room. Lay down. Go to sleep. Want me to sing a lullaby? No. Okay. Lay down. I love you, Charlie. And I'm really proud of you. I hope you had a good day celebrating. You deserve it. Now go to sleep. Wait. I gotta say something nice back. Fuck you. I hate you. Please leave. <laughs> I should take offense to that. But I won't. <laughs> you're a good friend, H. I'm happy you're happy. I'm happy you're here. Aww. That was really sweet, Charlie. <laughs> Now get fuck out of my apartment! She just her forehead and leaves the room. She stumbles into the main room, nearly tripping, and spots a napkin on the floor by the sofa. She goes to it and sticks it up. It is scribbling all over it, and she reads it. She goes to the kitchen, lays the napkin on the counter. She opens the cupboard and takes out the coffee grounds to fill the coffee maker. She then takes a piece of paper and pen from the top of the fridge and writes, just turn on the coffee maker. H. She puts it beside the coffee maker, then goes to the door and leaves. Hazel bounces down the steps, trips over the last step, and falls into Henry's arms. <laughs> hey, nice catch! <laughs> y- yeah, I'm I'm surprised. <laughs> Wanna go home? Mm-hmm. You know, we are gonna be very hungover in the morning. I don't believe in hangovers. But hangovers believe in you. <laughs> Does anyone want to talk about anything? There was a king line. That line was king shit. (laughs) The lines are so good. Every single line of this was just, I was howling, you guys. That scene was 15 pages long. (laughs) (laughs) Because it wasn't a 15 page version, every single line individually was so, so funny. And like, obviously the acting, excellent. But one of my favorite, yes. My two favorite things from like the last part anyway, because a lot just happened. It, it's obviously when Charlie's like, I have to say something nice back. Fuck you, I hate you. <laughs> like, and we're like, oh, oh, just kidding. And also, hangovers believe in you. My fave part of the scene is when he's just singing to herself. And after a while, Charlie's like, what the fuck did you just say? <laughs> because that was literally my my reaction to the minute Becca went off I was like what the fuck is she talking about we had the script I was like what the fuck cellophaning hit me like no other (laughs) hit me like no other I cry cellophaning alone deserves an Emmy right I'm like (laughs) I forgot I was Walt because I was too busy cracking up sorry what else was it I had two (laughs) other points for that improv though facts True. No, I'm mad Thank about you. that. I, I said I would say it if they didn't cut me off. I got my pen back. I, you got your pen back finally. I was so, I was having a really justice. hard time. I was having a really hard time staying in in character when the pen was being returned. Uh, all I could think of was the pen, and the pen. Henry doesn't care about the pen, but I but Mateo cares about the pen. Mateo cares very much about the pen. So who's hazy callback? Sent me. Sent me. <laughs> Walt is the main character, and that is it. <laughs> I love Walt. I a spinoff of Walt's life. We've probably talked about this. We have. Yeah. You know what? Yeah. yeah, just for fun. Yeah. The drawing of the sh- the sheriff's badge? Yeah. <laughs> the curious just reminds me of the, the I do what I want note. <laughs> <laughs> the delivery of now get the fuck out of my apartment? Good. <laughs> <laughs> Just in, in general, Will, your your sense of playing drunk in such a an unexpected way was was yes. truly truly an honor to behold. Yes, like, Will. Sense playing. Yes, Will. Yes. <laughs> I think I think my favorite part is that across 
the gang, there you have every different type of drunk. And that is just... Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Yes. I really enjoyed being the sober one at the beginning. Dude. Walking in and seeing these people being so wasted, like not normal amounts of, of wasted. Like this is our record deal just got picked up kind of level wasted. And I walk into that and <laughs> your your whiskey line was such a good read. Thanks, thanks. <laughs> also the little H on the coffee maker. <laughs> Hello? <laughs> what? Sammy. Yeah. The only reason that whole last section existed is because of the conversation you had with me last week. Last week, Sammy sent me a What was last week? <laughs> you died nap last kid. week. Right, that's why I suppressed it. Cool, gotcha. Oh. What, are, what are we last talking week, about? Last week, Sammy sent me a text and she was like, I'm writing a note from Val and I want to, sh I want to read it to you. And I said, okay. And then she read me a note she wrote from Val as she was dying and I was like, and then Becca and I were like, nah, we can't ignore that. We're going to put a note here because of Sammy. So there you go. Wow. Wow. Uh, uh, wow. I am hurt. So <laughs> I, want to I want to read the note. I was talking to Will last week and he was like, write it down. Write your, write your upset feelings down. And I was like, bet. All right. What am I doing with the entire episode now that I have no lines? <laughs> Girl, you, you, you so can't sad. die. Oh, Don't God, worry. <laughs> <laughs> Biggest joke I've ever heard in my life. Hilarious. Love uh, you. Love yeah, you I love you too, Aurora. Hey. It's fine. Does anyone else have anything to say about that nonsense that just happened? Drink responsibly. No. Don't drink and drive. Oh. Yes. Or read and fly. Or use pure Don't willpower to get home. <laughs> Don't do that. No, I, I, I agree with the weed. <laughs> Oh, yeah. Yeah. Shall we keep moving then? That's not Let's. going in the final cut, right? Let us. We'll see what happens. Oh, for fuck's sake. <laughs> Smoke weed Mom, and Mom, Dad, if you're watching, I'm sorry. Jim is in the kitchen making scrambled eggs over the stovetop. He's making as much noise as humanly possible, humming loudly, hitting spoons together, banging pots and pans together, really hamming it up as Hazel and Henry drag their feet into the kitchen. <laughs> Mm -hmm. oh. Good morning. Lovely to see you both. Did you sleep well? Oh, you two look so well rested. I thought after such an exciting evening, you might need some breakfast. Oh dear, I guess that's where it'll stay forever. Ugh, I'm such a mess. Let me pick that up. Oh. Ugh. Dad. Please stop. Stop what? Do you not want breakfast? No, making so much noise. Oh, my apologies, my dear daughter. My, you must have had a wonderful night. You were making so much noise when you came home. You know, it's been a long time since I've been woken up, woken up at three o'clock in the morning. I'm so glad it was my last day of work. So thank you for that. Truly, thank you. They weren't that loud. <sighs> Coffee? Please. Why are you so loud? We were out celebrating, Dad. Capital Records. <sighs> Hazel, I'm getting a little worried. Why? Well, you've been drinking a lot, and I... Dad, don't... it's fine. Like I said, we're celebrating. Don't worry. I'm not like you. And Charlie and Valerie's party. No, no, what was that? Like that, that. that was fucked up. That was fucked up. You can't stop there. <laughs> That's fine, we can talk. How's it going? Jim's what was that? Do you see? Do you see Jay's face right now? He is upset. We need to talk about this. We'll talk. We'll talk. We'll talk. Hey, here's my thing: is that I, the first time I read this, and every time I read it afterwards, and hearing it now, had the same effect on me every time. Ow! What the fuck, Hazel? Why? Why did you have to? I know that he was just being very annoying, but did you have to go that far to be like, oh well? <clears throat> I'm Hazel, not like you can't you just like dad. say things like that. <laughs> 
<laughs> he still has full send or no send. We we've, we've been new. He was just trying I, to clap back. You didn't have to do him like that. I also think I also think that because you know Hazel is clearly not in in possession of all of her mental faculties right at this instant. I, I believe that that contributes to the decision making process of, of how exactly she was going to word that sentiment. I don't know that it necessarily was intended to be a bite, but I think, you know, when you're hung over and you're just like blunt about things and needful. No, I don't believe in hangovers. <laughs> well, okay. let me tell you something about what hangovers believe in. I just wanted to say to my son, my son. Now you know how it feels when your child upsets you like that. <laughs> Serves you right. I told you, if you'd raised her properly. Boys, you're I not mean, fucking I mean, here really. yet. Please leave. <laughs> you're arriving later on. Please. Not now, Mom. <laughs> oh, my God. Mom, stop. You're embarrassing oh, me in front of my friends. Mom. That scene was the equivalent to the... I don't get no sleep because of y'all. Y'all not gonna get to sleep because of me. <laughs> that that was just what that scene was. Do we have an over-under on how many Vine references AJ is gonna get during this? It was inspired after stuff my dad does when I come home uh, hungover, which doesn't happen because I don't live with my parents anymore. But that's something he would do is like smack spoons everywhere and be like, oh, I'm making you breakfast. And then we talked and decided to put that little bit in the end where he's like, I'm worried about you. And that just came out of it. So your dad is loud. So you decide to stick a knife in his Come heart. for my entire life. No, stick a knife. Hi, dad. If you're watching this, um, I love you. Brutal. Yeah, he's going to believe that. I, after that. Also, what about far, Jim, Becca? Amazing as the verbal acting between Jay and Becca was, I really just need to big up Mateo's <laughs> face because that is everything. His I, little I, tiny peep when he just said, please. <laughs> Very right. Full <laughs> sent me. Relatable. I'm like, that's me. <laughs> I, I gave myself a bit of a headache. <laughs> Charlie lays in bed still in his clothes from the night before. Goes over and groans, getting uh... Thank you so much. He makes his way, shuffling into the kitchen, looking around, not really knowing how he got there. He pours himself a cup of water and starts drinking it, looking around. That was redundant. It's fine. He finds Hazel's note, smiles, and turns on the coffee maker. He turns and spots the napkin sitting there. He goes to it and picks it up. Music cue, Abraham Martin and John by Dion. Charlie and Rich sit side by side in the lobby of the studio. Rich grips a folder of paper. Charlie carries a copy of the 45. A secretary sits across from them behind a desk. Secretary gets up and goes through a door, leaving Charlie and Rich alone in silence, save for the music. A beat passes. Secretary returns and sits back down. She looks at Rich, then returns to her work as Eddie walks into the office and smiles. Ooh. Good morning, Eddie. Morning. Is he here? Of course. Come on, then. He's not ready for them yet. They're with me. We are? Yeah. That's cool. Yeah, I see no problem. Eddie, he's not ready for them. Open the office door. Frank Dane sits behind a desk, writing something down. He looks up at Eddie and smiles. Eddie, wasn't expecting you. I come bearing friends. Well, your next appointment, at least. Oh. Did she let you in? No, not at all. Oh, okay, great. Sit. <laughs> so... Eddie gave me your record. It was very good. The whole thing? You listened to the whole thing? Yes, and it's very good. Did you both write the song? He did. I'm just here for the ride. Well, we really like your songs. Do you have more? Yeah. You have a lot more. These are very good. Rich, we're very impressed. We have a position for you. Eddie holds the door open for Rich and Charlie as they leave the building and they start walking towards the parking lot. What the fuck just happened? Congratulations. <laughs> Holy shit, man. This is great. I don't know what the fuck to do. I guess just wait for the call. 
fucking stack songwriter. Carol King. Who? Do I know you, man? Where did you come from? How did you get our record? <laughs> oh, hey, uh, I'm the DJ that keeps playing your song. Oh, shit. That makes sense. Uh, nice to meet you, man. <laughs> yeah, you too. Also, uh, congratulations, Charity, for being signed. That's uh, great. Yeah, thanks, man. <laughs> well, I, I, I've got to get back to work. But it's nice seeing you again, Charlie. Hey, you should come over to our friend's New Year's Eve party. It's a pretty big deal, actually. We have important friends. Uh, yeah, maybe. Congrats. I'll see you around. So what happened with him? Nothing, man. Don't worry about it. Don't worry? Dude, you were making eyes. Dude! Valerie smiles at Charlie, across from him, just the two of them. Thanks for lunch. Yeah, anytime. Anytime. I'll remember that. Ah, oh, shit. You'll call me? I will. You won't wait two weeks before doing it this time? I'll call you tomorrow. Oh, don't sound that needy, babe. <laughs> Takes one to know one. <laughs> I don't need you, Charlie. But I want you. Talk later. She kisses his cheek and walks off. And Charlie watches Eddie go, then looks back at Rich. I don't want to think about someone else right now. Just looking out for you, man. He's sweeping the floor as Charlie organizes some papers over at the counter. She suddenly stops and starts laughing. What? I just can't believe it. <laughs> I can't wait to tell Henry and, and my dad and, and Evelyn. I want to tell everyone right now. Oh my God. They're going to be so excited for us. Yeah. You don't sound too excited about this. You were the only person I had to tell. Can I show you something? Of course. I found this the other day. Oh. Wow, this is very, wow. You read it already. Yeah, sorry. I found it after I put you to bed. Are you okay? Do you think she, that she was, you know, dying? I don't know. I, I don't want to know. The bell rings as the door opens. Evelyn enters, hobbling a little. Charlie stuffs his wallet in his back pocket like nothing happened. Hello. Is everything okay? Evelyn, yes, everything's fine. Charlie actually has something to tell you. What? Go on, tell her the good news. Ooh. Uh, go ahead. Uh, okay. We just got signed to a record label. Oh! <laughs> what does that mean? Well, it means that... It means we're gonna, we're gonna make a full album as a band and our songs will be played all over the place and we're gonna become famous. <laughs> yeah, that. <laughs> Oh, wow. Th that's amazing. Wow. Congratulations. Are you okay, Evelyn? Yeah, I am fine. You don't seem too fine. <laughs> it's just some cramping. Uh, I'm okay. Are you sure? We can go to the hospital. Pain is normal. Uh, you almost ready to go? Yeah, almost. What? Where are you going, Hazel and Evelyn? Good question, Charlie. I'm going with Evelyn to her last checkup, a godmother's duty. Okay, great. 
Uh, can I use your washroom before we go? Downstairs. Couples over to the basement door and down the stairs. This so jumpy. If anything happens to her, I think I'll have a heart attack. She's fine. You're not, clearly. As the baby's godmother, I have a duty to protect. You know, a godmother does nothing, right? Unless she dies. Evelyn will never die. Not if I have anything to do with it. In the stairwell, they hear Evelyn yell. Hazel and Charlie look at each other, then run over to the stairs. Evelyn, are you all right? No, we need to go. We need to go now. Wait, what? Go where? What? What's happening? Don't freak out. But we need to get to the hospital. Holy shit. Oh my god, okay. Uh, what do we do? How are we getting there? Uh, neither of us have a car. Uh, should we call Henry? I'm gonna call Henry. Okay. Shit! And that's where it'll We don't have set. time for that! <laughs> Hazel, 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 Henry works at the hospital. He can't come get us. Wait, how can we get to the hospital? Uh, you can't walk here in labor. Hazel, calm down. I'll get you guys a cab. Are you okay? Is there anything I can do? You can stop freaking out because it's freaking me out. Cab is waiting. Thank you, Charlie. Are you coming with us? I, uh, uh, no. no. Okay, okay. That's fine. I've got this all under control. I'll get us to the hospital and everything will be fine. You're going to have a baby and everything's going to be fine. <laughs> I'll call Diana. Thank you. All right. Get going. <laughs> oh my God. We're having a baby. Not we're. Me. Hazel laces her arm through Evelyn's and helps her out the door into the backseat of the cab. Charlie shuts the door behind them, flips the open sign to close and locks the door. Hazel charges down the hallway towards the waiting room with Diana close behind. Hazel sits down in one of the plastic chairs and slumps. Why would he kick me out of the room? Wow, what a great question. Dance is beside her. They sit for a second. Hazel tries to get up. Diana pushes her back. I'm the godmother. I should be in there. Look, no one gives a shit about that if you're going to hyperventilate and scream in front of the doctors. Besides, no one's allowed in the room, Hazel. Hospital rules. I'm worried about Evelyn. She's fine. But we don't know that if we're out here. Calm the fuck down. Henry enters the waiting room, a little doctor's name tag hanging from his shirt. Hello, darling. How are you? Henry, is Evelyn okay? Uh, probably. I, I'm not a doctor, but I'm sure she's fine. Wait, how did you know we were here? Evelyn's in labor. Did you know? I heard a nurse say Evelyn's name. And someone mentioned calling security for the maternity ward because a young lady was freaking out. So I figured you were here. Also, I, I called Phil. Where is she? What the fuck? Why would you do that? Hi, Hazel. Nice to see you too. I, I mean, this, this is his kid too, and he's in town, so. But he's a dick. No offense, Phil. Whatever, can I see her? Yeah, Henry, can you watch Hazel? Make sure she doesn't stand up and run away. Diana gets up and leads Phil away. Henry looks at Hazel, then at his watch. Well, um, I'm all done for the day. Do you want me to take you home? No. I'm staying here until I know Evelyn's okay and until I can meet this baby. Godmother's duty. Am I overreacting? Yes. Evelyn lays in the bed holding Louise's hand as a couple of nurses scribble down notes and readjust things in the room. You're doing great, honey. Just keep breathing. It's almost over. The nurse knocks on the door with Phil beside her. Evelyn, the father of the child, is here. Would you like him in the room? Phil? Hey. Yeah, he can come in. Phil enters the room. Louise looks at him as he goes around to the other side of the bed and takes Evelyn's other hand. She squeezes his hand. Cut to the next day, Hazel is passed up in the waiting room, meeting against Diana, who is reading a book. Henry walks back into the waiting room, wearing the same clothes as the day before, and Diana looks up at him. Hey, anything yet? Aside from finally getting her to calm down, 
No. Does it usually take this long? Yes. Killa runs in. Guys! What? Hmm? What? What's happening? I wasn't sleeping. What's happening? I have a daughter. <gasps> Hazel gets up and pushes past Phil and runs down the hall. Hazel! Congratulations, Phil. This is really exciting. Just give me a second. Hazel! And he runs after her. In the hospital room, some of the nurses are cleaning up the room as Evelyn lays in the bed with the baby in her arms. Louise sits on the side of the bed. Hazel runs into the room, stops, and gasps. Hi. Hi. Oh my goodness. You should be proud of Evelyn. She's very strong. Hazel, you can't just run into... <gasps> oh my god. What's her name? I was about to ask. It's a terrible name. <laughs> I'm sure it's adorable. Her name is Annie, short for Marianne. <sighs> That's not terrible at all. And the middle name? Her full name is Marianne Ginger Foster. Like Ginger Rogers. Exactly. See, Mom? Hazel understands. Phil appears behind them at the door, looking in. From the way you're looking at her, Henry, one might think you wanted a child. What? Absolutely not. Absolutely not, Henry. Get that idea out of your head. At least for now. Louise gets up and goes to Phil. She nods him into the hallway and he follows. Once in the hallway, she stops. Nice of you to show. I wouldn't miss this for anything. Hmm. Well, that sounds ironic coming from you, doesn't it? Where were you when she needed you? Where were you this whole pregnancy? I was working. Uh, she knows that. Has it your husband been working this whole time too? My husband is a doctor overseas. He is saving lives. You take pictures. You have no excuse for how you've treated her. I was making money so we could have a life together. Or were you running away? Well, I helped make that. That is your child and the mother of your child. They are not things, they are people. And until you view them as such, I don't want you anywhere near my daughter. What about my daughter? You've had no hand in preparing for this child. You have no hand in raising this child. Do you understand? But that's my daughter. Do you understand? Yes, ma'am. You hear some laughing. Both look over and see Catherine standing there, laughing with Gregory beside her, going through a comic book. Catherine! Gregory! Wonderful. Would you like to meet your niece? Louise walks back into the hospital room with Catherine and Gregory behind her. Back in the hospital room, Louise sits beside Evelyn again. Henry and Hazel move out of the way as Catherine and Gregory move closer. It's gross. Oh, for Pete's sake, Gregory. She's cute. Isn't she? Well, Merry Christmas, Mom. Not Christmas. 24th is close enough. Hazel, why don't you go call your father? Oh, oh, shoot. Hazel leaves with Henry close behind. He turns around to look at Annie one last time as Hazel pulls him out. Where's Phil? I don't know. Mom took a bite out of him. What? It was really cool. Like, I've always wanted to see a grown man cry. Now, Catherine. What did you say to him? It's not important now, dear. We can discuss it when you're all ready to go home, hmm? Oh, all right. Annie starts to cry. What do I do? I was asked to pause after this scene to talk. Yeah, I got some thoughts. So I, and I can know that I am the minority in this, literally just seeing the comments in the side. But I, I hate how he's treated. Like I, like yeah. maybe it's because I am like, so I have a different perspective because I'm him, but love and affection can only kind of take you so far in life. 
you know, he could a hundred percent just stop doing his job and been at home with her the entire time for the seven months that they were together instead of working and held her and done whatever. And then they also could have just been on the street and she could have died. Also, Louise, where were you for seven months uh, of that pregnancy? Because last time I checked, I was paying for somewhere for her to live, feeding her and making sure that she was probably getting to her doctor's appointment and coming back from her doctor's appointment. So because he has to travel for work, he's now a villain in everybody's eyes. It's almost like divine retribution that this woman who he has met once, whom not to mention he was trying to foster a relationship between the mother and, and daughter when there was no relationship there the whole time that they were apart. And now he's the villain in all of this now that the mother has her daughter back and it's you weren't there, you don't get any say, you don't do anything. It's like, well, for seven months of the relationship, he was working his butt off to try to afford this baby. And honestly, judging from the fact that he actually came and was there for the birth, I'm assuming he continued that for the next two months of trying to save for this baby. So it's not like he just like fucked off and like partied with his friends for nine months while this girl was making a baby inside of her. Like he was doing everything he thought he had to do to do this. Yes, okay, he really neglected Evelyn and her feelings and her, what she actually needed. Like that was totally out of his mindset, but, but he was doing what he thought he needed to do by this baby. It's more of what's frustrating for me is his response to this is that like, he's like this person who like, he's met one time, tell him you're never allowed to see your baby. Like you are not part of this, this baby's life. I mean, maybe it's a different time, but like, and maybe I'm just a different person, but it's like, I would not spend nine months of my life working and saving and scrimping and doing what I need to do for something. And then one person pulls me aside and says, go fuck yourself. And I'm like, okay, bye, see ya later. Mm, okay. To me, like that is just like, so out of my like, frame of mind like that is not something that like me as a human would do and like I know like Hillary you've been saying like even Louise like you had to get into that person's mind of like how they would like talk and how they would so like maybe it's that for me like it's just like something that's so foreign that like I would me and Patrick would never ever ever spend nine months doing something and then have one person say no and then like be like okay in terms of the general perspective on on phil and i think that it's important to remember i guess in a story as a whole that everyone in the story is very human and not a single person is is like this sunshine rainbow perfect person even though it is fictional it's like yeah i think that phil's not exempt from that he's not 100 percent bad either and except I think, walt yeah. Sorry. Except, except Walt. Walt, Walt is, is perfect. 100% good and per potentially Dawn is 100% bad. But other than them, mm -hmm. yes. Phil's not exempt from that. There was no balancing for him. Oh, absolutely. I'm not, I am not saying that he was good to her at all. Like, exactly. Like, <laughs> <laughs> I think that, that the core of Phil's story that we've seen is that he's just very human and in like a very sticky situation that he did not ask to be, either of them asked to be in it, of mm. course. He's just trying to do what he thinks is right and maybe he's made some wrong decisions along the way. But I think Patrick, you're you're right. Even, even though you're like, maybe it's just me. I think you're right that it maybe would take more than just her being like, you know what? No, for him to be like, all right, well, see ya, <laughs> you know? I don't believe that anything that happens within the relationship between two parents should affect whether or not the parent has access to their kid. Um, yes, their relationship, first of all, it takes two. <laughs> um, their relationship, neither one of them was perfect in the relationship, okay? It broke down. That does not give Louise the right to tell him that he cannot be a part of his kid's life. That is his daughter. That is his baby as well. Uh, and just because something might not have happened well within the relationship does not mean that he shouldn't be allowed to raise his kid. So um, I, to me, that was kind of, um, it was a bit of a lot just because it was kind of like this moment of like, you know, finally putting the character in his place. But like, again, it, that's his baby. 
and it doesn't matter if him and the mom are not together anymore or if I mean it was Evelyn who broke up the not broke up the relationship it was Evelyn that put a stop to the relationship but it was because you know yes Phil wasn't attentive or anything that that but that's moot point I mean that's something between the parents it has nothing to do with his relationship with the kid I think the fact that Phil showed up changes my perception of him and, and what I thought his his deal was because he told Evelyn I'm not going to be there when it comes I'm moving to a different city I, I agreed that that what happens in relationships should have no bearing on whether or not a parent can see their child but that would that concerns me on em on Evelyn's behalf because this child is going to have a father that is not reliable that cannot be there that makes promises that he doesn't keep but the fact that Phil did show up and that ultimately did express a concern because there were points in other episodes where I thought Phil's just looking for a way out whether he was out making money for Evelyn and the child or whether he was out making money because he wanted to be away from Evelyn and the child was I, I like what wasn't sure in my head but the fact that he did show up does make me think that maybe it was about actually getting money to support the child and that he really was planning to come back. I don't feel like Louise is that forgiving. I have three, three thoughts to perhaps justify Louise's behavior. The first thought is that this is a very highly emotional day for her and her eldest daughter is giving birth for the first time. So I could see her initial reaction to Phil being like very emotional with there being room for some sort of compromise after the fact. Um, my second point is like, we know she's kind of a she wolf and like overly defensive, whatever. But I would keep in mind that Louise and Phil really haven't had much direct contact. So Louise is coming from the place of what Evelyn has told her about Phil. So that could start, you know, it's like, well, I'm going to trust what my daughter says about this guy who isn't around. And my third point is that Louise is also coming from the position of knowing what it's like to have a husband who isn't there. So there is a lot of the emotional labor that should be shared between the partners, but like Louise has had to shoulder a lot of that raising her kids. I'm not sure how long her husband has been, how, how often he has gone overseas. Yeah, I'm sure, I'm certain she's feeling very defensive for Evelyn. Patrick, I have to like commend you for that performance because I, my heart just, no, seriously, my heart just shattered on the, Thank you. but that's my daughter. Like there was like this little crack and I was like, this is just like a little boy who just like doesn't know what the hell to do and is fucking terrified. And that's why he's doing the things he's doing but clearly cares. Everyone's like, oh, read the room, fell, read the room, fell. But it's like, he's, you, we have to remember, he's literally been God. Like he doesn't know what's going on in your life. So he doesn't know that you and Hazel just had this weird breakup. You're, you're weird for reacting the way you reacted situation. He's just being like, yeah, I came home and you're drunk on the couch. Like what, like, okay, like, see ya like it, yeah, it's very it's, you know what i mean so it's, it's just it's like uh he's he's trying to maneuver everyone else's hyper emotions and crazy reactions to him and he, and he doesn't know why he's getting the reactions that he's getting i think he should have shown this depth of care earlier oh absolutely yeah but i don't think it should be too late at this point people can be wrong and right at the same time <clears throat> Yeah, I was going to say, we can't make Louise 100% likable all of a sudden. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Louise is not going to all of a sudden turn around and be like, kumbaya. And and Phil is is not all of a sudden going to turn around and be like, I was so wrong and I love my daughter so much. But by confronting each other, they are trying to redeem themselves for their way of mishandling the situation with Evelyn and they're just both terrified and they just both don't know what to do and are trying to do the right thing and are just like kind of not very good at it but they're trying and that's so interesting so like big big hats off to the to the writers and the and the performers of this scene because it's it's a very it's a very complex one but it's so truthful in that way and that's that's why we we are able to have a 20 minute conversation about this one page of dialogue because it's so 
ah, it's so juicy. There's so much to it. When we sat down to write that, a lot of it was, yeah, these are two characters who haven't had the opportunity to speak and have continually been viewed as not great people. How do we... Yeah, all we needed was Val, and then it would be great. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> but the thing that I kept looking at this from, and I keep continuously looking at Phil and Louise and other characters from, is the perspective that we see the story from is the same, like, two, three people. So what we see of every single character is a skewed view. So we continually see someone else's opinion of a character. I have been purposefully trying, like, feeding you the narrative that Phil isn't great for whatever reason. But yes, if you look at Phil's track record, Phil has been very supportive financially, very supportive and in preparing for the child. And yes, not um, amazing at emotional support. Doesn't mean he's a bad guy, but because we continuously keep feeding the same viewpoint, that's what we keep reading, if that makes sense. Thank you for bringing this up and being willing to have this conversation, everyone, because I know a lot of people who this does ap apply to. Whenever we hate on Phil, there's always a kind of a sense of, oh, Evelyn deserves better. Let's not forget, Evelyn's like a high-strung, classist, racist young lady. <laughs> yeah, they each deserve different, but better or worse, ugh. Music, I wouldn't trade Christmas by a whole slew of Sinatras. The house is all decked out with Christmas decorations. Bonnie comes down the stairs, checking her notepad. There's a knock at the door. She opens it. Florence and John stand there with a large bag of gifts. Florence pushes past Bonnie and enters. Jim. Hazel. Yoo-hoo. There's muttering from the kitchen. Jim and Hazel arguing quietly behind the door. Go. Go. Please. Oh, what? Why me? And he's pushed into the foyer. <laughs> Hi, Mr. and Mrs. Keel. Mer Merry Christmas. Cut to Hazel and Henry sit on the stairs with Catherine, all chatting quietly. And there's another knock on the door. Hazel gets up and goes to answer it. Charlie, Rich, and Diana with Troy and Annette stand there, and she hugs them all and welcomes them in. Merry Christmas. Welcome to the family. Florence walks into the foyer and stops seeing them. Cut to... All the Keels, Henry, Charlie, Rich, Diana, Troy, Annette, Louise, Catherine, and Gregory, oh my god, all sit at the dining room table with a marvelous, magnificent dinner around them. Everyone is eating, chatting, having a great time. Florence keeps her eye on them. Henry takes Hazel's hand and squeezes it. She looks at him and smiles. She then looks over at Charlie and smiles. Cut to music cue, Santa Bring My Baby Back to Me by Elvis Presley. Everyone is sitting in the den with gifts, some open, some still wrapped. Troy and Annette have fallen asleep in Diana's arms. Louise hands Hazel a gift. This one is from Evelyn. She's very apologetic she couldn't be here today, of course, but they're taking good care of her in the hospital. Hazel takes the gift and opens it. It's a picture frame with a black and white photo of two of them, Charlie, Rich, and Valerie at the protest in March. Hazel looks at it, then holds it close and smiles. She turns it around for everyone to see. She has the biggest smile on her face. Cut to Jim and Louise stand at the front door. Catherine and Gregory are already outside waiting on her. Thank you, Jim. This was such a wonderful Christmas. Of course. It's very much appreciated. We'll see you in the next few days, Louise. Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas, Jim. Mo lights a candle over her fireplace, then sits down cross-legged and looks up at Charlie. He's laying across the couch, smoking a joint. How was your holiday? It was okay. Just okay? It was different. A good different? Yeah, I guess so. Good. How are you coping? I found this. And what is it? Well, it's not like this is new. It's not like we haven't done this before. Done what? Slept with other people. So why is the problem this time? Because I love him. And I'm tired of looking for love in someone else. I want his love. You have it. Do I? I don't want to talk about this here, Val. You want to work through how you're feeling? Work through it. Fucking talk. How are you feeling? <laughs> I'm feeling fucking defeated. Uh, 
and tired. I'm worn out. It's okay to admit defeat. There is strength in that. So take a step back and start again tomorrow. Tomorrow's New Year's Eve, Charlie. There's so much possibility in that. Let's set an intention for the new year. What's one thing you want to focus on? I don't know. Well, what brings you joy? Uh, music, I guess. So there you go. Focus on music. How? That's for you to figure out. What are your plans for New Year's? You're not spending it alone, I hope. I'm going to Hazel's New Year's Eve party. I'm going to pretend to be much more interesting than I am. You're very interesting. What about you? Any plans? We're not supposed to talk about me, Charlie. You should stop by. We can bring plus ones, and Rich doesn't have one, so I'm sure it'll be fine. <laughs> well, I have a few parties to go to, but I'm sure I could swing by. You like inviting me places, don't you? <laughs> it's Hazel's fault. Music cue, Promises, Promises by Dionne Warwick. The house is full with lots of chatter. Everyone's dressed to the nines. The party is in full swing, drinking food everywhere. Everyone is chatting little circles. The main event is Evelyn in the den holding Annie in her arms with Louise beside her. Florence is doing her damn just to try and hold the baby, but Evelyn won't let her. Thank God. Hazel and Henry are in the foyer chatting with a few family members, a few friends. What? Jim wanders around by himself. There's a knock at the door. Jim goes and answers it. Bonnie stands there with a man. George. Bonnie, welcome. So glad you're here. And nice to meet you, sir. You are... Jim, this is George, my fiance. Congratulations! Oh, that's wonderful news. Uh, welcome to the family, young man. Uh, c come on in, C grab a drink. Evelyn walks into the foyer and goes to Hazel and Henry. Hazel, can you hold Annie for a minute? I really need to use the washroom and no one will leave me alone. Of course, what else is a godmother for? Oh. I'm in love. Well, I'd hope so. I really like seeing you with a baby. Henry, we are not having a child anytime soon. No, of, of course, of course. It's just, I, 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 I you know, I, I, I would like one, one day. That's all. I like the name Benjamin. We are definitely not having a child anytime soon, and when we do, you cannot name it. That's a terrible name. Well, what will you name a child? Something... interesting. Unique. Shakespearean. Oh, sure. Uh, okay. There's a knock at the door. Hazel goes to it and opens the door. Charlie, Rich, Diana, Troy, and Annette are there all dressed quite nicely. You're here. Oh, come in. What are you holding? That's a baby, Charlie. What? what are, did that miss something? This is Annie Foster, Evelyn's daughter. Annie, this is Troy and Annette. Say hi, Annie. And this is Diana. This is Rich. And this is Charlie. And Danny starts to cry. Uh, and this is something I don't know how to deal with. Hi, everyone. Just excuse me for one moment. Come with me. Let's get you some drinks. Hazel leads Charlie, Rich, Diana, and her kids into the den. Jim leaves the kitchen and starts walking back to the den. Henry sees them and goes over. Uh, Mr. Keel, are you busy? Can I talk to you for just a moment? Jim leads him back into the kitchen. In the kitchen, Bonnie is smoking at the window with George. Bonnie, George, would you mind if we spoke privately here? No one ever wants me in the kitchen. And she pulls him out of the kitchen with her. Is everything all right, Henry? Yeah, I, uh, I just, um, I was just going to ask you, um, I, I, uh... Charlie walks into the kitchen. Oh, uh, Hazel said there was beer in here. 
Uh, yes, there is. Uh, this this is good, actually. Can you stay for a second, Charlie? I want to ask you both uh, a, a question. Uh, okay. So, um, I uh, I want to I want to ask uh, permission to um to to ask Hazel to marry me. Oh shit. <laughs> <laughs> of course, Henry. Of course you can. You don't need to ask me. You know I love having you around, of course. <laughs> Thank you, Mr. Keo. What? Are 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 you okay with this? Yeah. Why are you asking me? You're really important to her. So you're important to me too. Hell yeah, man. Go for it. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Great. So, uh, tonight. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, God, no. I don't have the nerves for that. Or even a ring. I, I don't have a ring yet. Would you like Mary's? Shit. Do, 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 do you think she, she would want that? Yes. Then, then yes, Mr. Keel, I, I would, I, I would really appreciate that. I'll be right back then. And Jim leaves the kitchen. Congratulations. Thanks. You know, you're the reason we're even together in the first place. So thank you. Oh, don't put that on me. It's all you, man. Good job. I'm really glad she has you. Likewise. Out in the den, music cue, a ray of hope by the rascals. Rich and Diana sit on the sofa with Hazel and Louise chatting and drinking while Greg Green shows trying to net his comics over in the corner. There's a knock at the door in the distance. Someone answers it. I have to thank you, Diana, for keeping Hazel out of the way at the hospital. Hey, hold on. She's like a child. She's a handful. Isn't she just? I've been saying this for years. She's unpredictable. I can hear you. I'm sitting between you. Looks like they don't care. Not at all. Diana, you should join us for dinner one of these days. I would love to have you and your kids over. Gregory seems to like them. Mo walks into the den with Florence, chatting her ear off. Who's that? Oh, that's Mo, Charlie's friend. Excuse me for a minute. Rich gets up and goes to Mo. Florence sees him coming, rolls her eyes, and walks away. Hello. I'm Richard Kingston III, Prince of Spain. My friends call me Rich. And you are? Oh, you're rich. What does that mean? It's wonderful to finally meet you. Maureen Whitaker III, Queen of France. But my friends call me Mo. Well... Let's get you a drink, Queen Mo. Rich holds his elbow out to her and walks her to the bar cart. Oh. That is completely unexpected. But I love it. Jim, Charlie, and Henry make their way into the den, each with a drink in their hands. Hazel waves them over. Charlie! Charlie, Mo's here. Rich is pouring her a drink as she laughs at something he said. Oh, no. I need to find a new person to talk to. Henry reaches into his pocket and pulls out a card. You can call me. Music cue, American Boys by Patricia Clark. There's a knock at the door. Hazel and Jim look at each other for a beat. She gets up and goes to the door. Eddie stands there carrying a bottle of wine. Oh, hi. Nice to see you again. Come in. Uh, for you. Thank you. <laughs> Follow me. She leads him into the den immediately. Charlie looks at him. Eddie meets his eye for a second. Why don't we get you a drink? She steers him into the bar cart with Rich and Mo and puts the wine down. Rich, look who it is! Oh, hey man, good to see you. Yeah, thanks for inviting me. I will be right back. Keep him here. 
Hazel runs over to Charlie. Is your name Eddie, by any chance? Uh, yeah, it is. Uh, nice to meet you. Hazel takes Charlie's hand and pulls him towards the bar cart, leaves his drink on the table. What's his name again? I don't remember his name. Uh, Eddie? That's it. Oh my goodness. I am terrible with names. Let's go say hi. Hazel. Hi, Eddie. Sorry, I completely forgot your name, but Charlie here remembered it. This is my friend Charlie. Have you met Charlie? This is Charlie. Um, <laughs> yes. We have met a, a few times. Of course, I forgot. Sorry, I've had so much to drink. I can't remember anything. Anyways, Rich, Mo and I have to go, don't we? Hazel links arm with, arms with Rich and Mo and pulls them both towards the corner. What's happening? Just watch. Um, do you want a drink? I brought a bottle of wine. Oh, no, it's fine. I can just have what's open. Eddie looks at him, he takes the bottle of wine on, does the foil around it, grabs a bottle opener, and pulls the cork out. It's open now. And he pours two glasses and hands one to him. Oh shit. You're good, Hazel. I can sense love connections. Mo holds her hand out to Hazel, Hazel high fives her. Lauren spots Jim drinking and charges over to him. Jim, what are you doing? I'm having a drink. Are you drinking because you quit your job? Yes, Jim, I know you quit your job. I had to find out from your friends here at the party. I didn't quit. I retired. You are too young to retire, Jim. How will this affect Hazel? Hazel is fine, Mother. It's the New Year's. Everyone drinks. Louise, would you like another drink? Oh, no, I'm just fine. I should check on Evelyn. She took Annie upstairs some time ago. Would anyone else like a refill or something to eat? Jim, stop avoiding this. Now is not the time. Is everything okay? Hazel, your father is drinking. Well, of course, it's New Year's. One isn't going to kill someone. But you're starting to sound just like your father. What's wrong with that? Well... I have to make a speech. I have a speech to make. Thank you, Mother, for once again lifting the mood. Why did we invite her again? We're kind people. New Year's resolution. Be less kind. Well, <laughs> you know what your mother always said? Be kind to those who deserve it. <laughs> exactly. Are you sure you want to speak, dear? Don't worry. I've got this. <laughs> Eddie goes to the bar cart where people we don't know are standing and talking, takes a spoon and cleans the side of her glass. She goes into the foyer and stands on the stairs. People file out and stand around at the front at the foot of the stairs. She holds her hand out to Jim to join her. I just wanted to thank you all for coming today. As you know, this party is my favorite part of the year. I love getting to see everyone at their brightest and most optimistic. Was this a perfect year? Far from. <laughs> Will next year be perfect? I doubt it. But at the end of it all, we will all be here. Together. To celebrate. To be happy. To be full of love. And to share our love. Jim looks out at the people in front of Mary. Suddenly all people he knows and loves stare up at him. His glass raises just as hers was. And Hazel stands beside him. Here's to new beginnings, to new opportunities, new chances to learn, new life. Here's to a new year. Who knows what comes next? And that's the best part. Thank you. Everyone raises their glasses. The crowd starts to disperse. A few people, Charlie included, go up the stairs. Hazel sits on the stairs. Jim starts off and stops and looks at her. How are you feeling? Hungry. <laughs> Were you just planning on sitting here alone? 
I thought you'd be with Evelyn or Charlie or maybe Henry. Hazel looks up at Henry standing on the perimeter of a group. He looks at her, smiles, excuses himself and walks over and sits beside her. Are you having a good night? Well, I'm with you, so uh, it's a wonderful night. It would be better if your mother was here. Evelyn, still holding Annie, looks over at them on the stairs. She smiles at Hazel and goes and sits below her. I'm really glad you're still having this party, Mr. Keel. <laughs> it's a great way to honor Mary. Oh, well, this party meant a lot to her. Comes down the stairs. He stops behind Hazel and sits. Sitting? Well, it's our party, and we make the rules. So, yes. Our party. All you did was pick the color of the flowers. I picked well. <laughs> Bonnie goes over to the stairs. Well done with each gym. Sit with us, Bonnie. Oh, okay. Oh, she's adorable. Isn't she? She's the best thing that could have ever happened to me this year. She gave me something to believe in. Now, last year I was so terrified of what was about to happen. I felt very lost. This wasn't the life I wanted. I didn't know what I wanted. Everyone wanted me to get married and have kids and I just wanted to live. I didn't want to worry about other people, but people give you something to believe in, don't they? They do. Rich and Diana walk over. Is this where all the cool kids hang out? You think we're cool? <laughs> I was being polite, but sure. What are we talking about? Well, I've been talking about Annie. She's so cute. Oh my God, Evelyn, we get it. You have a kid. Oh, I'm sorry. I'm kidding. She's adorable. <laughs> Thank you all for being here today. Truly. I'm so pleased to know every single one of you. <laughs> Why? No, I agree. I'm really glad to have met all of you. Well. Dad, I've always known you, but everyone else, I'm really glad to know you. I'm really glad I got to spend this year with you. Don't get sappy on us. No, especially you. Hey, stop it, Hazel. Annie starts to cry again. Oh, oh no, I think she's tired. You sure that's the highlight of your year? <laughs> I believe, in the long run, she will be the highlight of my year. Right now, I just want to sleep. I believe in you, Evelyn. You'll be all right. You're doing great. I believe in you, too. You know who I believe in? The Beatles. Music Q, Hey Jude by the Beatles. What? Hazel. No, this is my fault. Why would you pick the Beatles? Hey, the Beatles are great. Almost as good as Bob Dylan. Shut up about Bob Dylan. Do we have to talk about music? Can we talk about something else? <laughs> Amen. <laughs> Happy New Year, everyone. Happy New Year. We fade out. The end. Uh, <laughs> I'm already crying. <laughs> All right, episode 13, see you next week. My favorite thing in this entire series is that last callback, because my favorite thing in the entire first episode was Jim's line, well, you got to believe in something, be it God or the Beatles. And uh, that lovely little callback at the end just really tied everything up with a nice little bow. This is a beautiful piece of work that you guys put together this was experienced for, for the first time it's like a cast actually feels like family to me like you guys are just everything this whole experience has just been 
amazing, especially during a pandemic when we're all so starved for like art making. And it's just, so thank you for putting this together. I was going to say, aside from the Ratatouille musical, this is really one of the best ways I've seen a piece of work done in Zoom because it's got so many different components that you couldn't really do without Zoom. So really well done within the margins of limitation. Thank you. And thank you for sharing a bounty of work because I remember seeing this on, on backstage for the first time and like the audition for this and was just like, oh, this, I don't really know what this is going to be. I have no idea what this is, what this could be about. And this has been the best thing I've been involved in for the, for the past like five months, probably. But congratulations as well for having this bounty of work, like in your back locker, like you bastards. <laughs> you have this thing now that you can like that hopefully like we've been able to bring to life for you a little tiny bit and you've been able to see all over again in a different sort of light and hopefully you've heard the the lines brand new for the first time and it's given you a whole sense of perspective and I have appreciated the fact that these conversations have brought up stuff that made me learn a lot about myself and a lot about others in this group and thank you for doing that and sharing all of that with us and it's been an absolute fucking pleasure to to have met every single bastard one of you you lovely bunch of human beings that i will i need to come over to canada us everywhere to meet you all please the way that i know that this is a fantastic <laughs> piece of writing is because when i think about you know the sundays to come when i'm not going to be seeing all of your lovely faces I, I miss every member of the cast and I miss the characters. I, I love Hazel Keel. I, I love Charlie. I've, I, I love Henry a lot. They feel like real people to me. I, I feel like I know, I know Henry and Charlie and Hazel as well as I know Becca and Francis and Aurora I've, I've never, ever in my life had the opportunity to, to be part of like creating a, a role in this way or, or, or be part of a, of a continuous series like this. Getting the chance to kind of, I don't know, see the, see the characters grow up for 12 weeks has been really, really meaningful to me. And it's, it's, it's inspired me a lot as a, as a writer too. I aspire to, to create characters in, in my writing that are, are half as vivid and complicated and unique and real as the characters in this piece. So thank you for bringing those characters into, into the world, Aurora, because the world is better for, for them being there. Can I make you make a promise, please? Yes. Can this piece of work cannot lay dormant for another five mm. years without it doing something? <laughs> no, 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 seriously, seriously, yeah. it can't. It can't because you, you explore so many themes and so much that I think there is, there is a reason why it has touched us in such a way. It is literally a human being thesis, like a thesis on human existence. Like it has its own elements of all of this sort of stuff. It cannot lay dormant for five years. You need to do something with it. Like, yeah, Aurora, this please. needs, this needs to be like filmed or something like this needs this needs to happen i want to hear the words please i promise this shall not lay dormant come on all right come, I, I aurora it. oh okay <laughs> i aurora shall not let this piece of work shall not let this piece of work lay dormant for another five years lay dormant fun word for another five years i will do my utmost i will do my utmost to cast us all in the feature film to cast us all in the <laughs> You're the narrator, no. babe. <laughs> Aurora, no, Aurora has to reprise her award-winning performance as Rich. Yeah, for the first like, uh, Rich four sometimes. Episodes. <laughs> for the yeah, first sometimes. four yeah. episodes. We just yeah. swap, the, swap yeah. them in yeah, and I'm out leaving. and I'm not leaving. say anything. I'm, I'm so I'm leaving. feeling, yeah, I'm don't feeling even explain it. Just another 12 weeks out. of miscast. I feel another 12 yeah. weeks of miscast. Thank you, Aurora, because Val was definitely the most challenging character I've ever had to play. It was really difficult getting inside her head, but 
I really enjoyed the process. So I just want to say thank you. It was very cathartic writing that note because she is very near and dear to my heart, but I wouldn't have had this opportunity if it weren't for you. So thank you. Thank you for allowing me to be a part of this. I know I came in unconventionally. I'm happy that I was able to help out as much as I could. And I hope you guys, you know, had fun with me as much as I had fun with you guys. <laughs> And, you know, honestly, the script is really well done. I think it definitely needs to be set up where, you know, you're, you feel comfortable enough to pitch it and see if you can get it picked up, especially right now with so many shows and so on being even considered like for Netflix or Amazon Prime or so on. So yeah, definitely. I think you, you definitely need to see how to go about that because it's well-written. The characters are very interesting and they're so different from each other that it allows people to watch a show and be like oh man Evelyn's my favorite character you know what I mean or like oh man Rich is my favorite character even though he's like out of episodes or something you know what I mean like characters that like will be gone for a minute and they come back and you're like that's my dude you know like it you you made it so that, that was possible so I think that's really dope I agree with Jay I agree with everybody I think you definitely need to go in yeah Phil too Phil yeah because honestly I was I kind of like Phil but <laughs> honestly this has been the greatest pleasure of all time I don't even have words. I genuinely thank you all for taking this wild random journey in the middle of a fucking pandemic. I really appreciate it. Just because you sing it, it makes it sound so much more glamorous. Right? That's why I sing it. <laughs> fucking Add pandemic. A little bit of spice. I, I do. I appreciate you taking time out of what I'm sure is a very busy time for everybody to be here and explore and goof around and have fun, I hope. And help me figure out what the fuck I'm doing. I also really love that we brought together three countries for a work of art. Exquisite. Yeah. That's one of my favorite parts of this. I just have to say, this has been an excellent, like, first big project for the flair in general, because, like, we are so, we talk about this all the time, but we're so fortunate to, like, have ended up with this group of people on our first try at getting like a group of people together to do something. We're like, oh my God, how lucky are we that we get to work with all these amazing people. Just everyone became a group so quickly and started to just like, everyone was so open and willing to, to chat in our discussions, but also to chat like and be friends with each other. So that's really cool. And like, thanks for all being a great group of people to work with. I've never read a role, but you made me feel like I was part of the family. So thank you. If I can also jump on the thank you train, if that's okay. Just a general thank you for everyone. You've all taught me so much. Thank you for allowing me to be open with you guys. And thank you for being supportive to anyone who opened up, not just me, but to anyone who decided to share a story or an experience or even their thought just on something in the script. Thank you for just being willing to be open with each other. And then I'm going to be cheesy and say a specific thank you to Aurora. This one got me back into writing. Two, you allowed me to help you write some of the episodes. And it was terrifying. <laughs> I was terrified the whole time. But I don't think if it were for this project, I don't think I would have progressed as a writer or an actor as much as I did. So, thank you. For a malevolent, murderous god, she's not so bad, eh? I don't know about that. I'm still comparing it to Thanos. Well, I know I'm not, I haven't been super vocal, but I just wanted to say that I've appreciated this experience so much, and I care a lot for all of you. So thanks for bringing me into your little community. It's been lovely and wonderful, and I mean, I can't say enough about this writing. So, amazing. So, thanks, everyone. <laughs> I'd like to have the honor of walking down the street and seeing one of you and going, oh, wait a minute, I know that face. I know that face. Oh, where, where from, where from? I know that face. I know all of these faces. Nancy, I'm so looking please forward. Come to the UK. I just want to reiterate what everyone's saying about how you, you need to do something with this script and specifically shout out my parents who watch every episode and call me each week after watching every episode to tell me how much this needs to be made into a, a real big thing and that every everyone our age would watch it and people your age would watch it and everyone would watch it and i agree <laughs> shout out to, to terry and candy 
Hi, Woo, Terry and Candy! I also Woo-hoo. want to take Yo, this Oh, hell yeah, Candy. Shout out, Terry and Candy. <laughs> Thanks for watching. Uh, before I finish filming, Becca, you wanted you wanted me slash you to say something. Oh, oh, say oh, speech, speech. Or do you want to say it or me or? So because we've been having such a great fucking time, uh, I've started plotting a season two. Fuck yeah! yeah I know. Yeah. Creative process takes a while, but if it came Woo-hoo. out. A little less than five years. That'd be very cool. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That'd be cool. That'd be cool. Yeah, yeah, yeah. There's two people working on it, so like. Oh, thank yeah. God. Two and a half years then. Yeah. And there's excitement. And then I'm I remember. clearing my calendar. Yeah, I've had to keep this a secret yes. for approximately a week to a week and a half, and it's been very hard to do for that long. Uh, yeah. I'm moving to Canada. <laughs> Am I still- I'm moving to Canada. <laughs> Am I still gonna be invited to these episodes? Because I'm oh dead. Oh my god! Well, yeah, you're, you the you're the new Mary. No. no. <laughs> I just no. I got really excited when I remembered. Oh no, Sammy! You're this is reaction. Was you're like Sammy actually Mary. died. You're the new Mary. You pop up every couple episodes to make us feel big emotions, and then you just vanish. Yes. Back into yeah. the we need many flashbacks with Val. Okay. For me personally, like this definitely like your intent of the getting the conversations going on in the workspace was definitely a learning opportunity for myself because a lot of the times, like I didn't necessarily um, participate in a lot of the, all of the conversations, but at the beginning, I would say like, I'd be sitting there with my computer, like screen turned off and I'd be like, why are we talking about this? Like, let's move on. Like, da, 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 da. And it really has kind of like been like, okay, well, no, like these conversations do have merit. They do have a place in the workspace. So thank you for the learning opportunity. <laughs> what a good discovery, Patrick. Thank you. Thank you. Hey, everybody. This is Hey Jude. Hey Jude, don't make it bad. Take a sad song and make it better. Remember to let her into your heart. Then you can start to make it better. So let it out and let it in. Hey, Jude, begin. You're waiting for someone to perform with. Does anyone have anything they want to say before we start today? Last episode! Channels! We made it! I love you all and you're all amazing. I'm sad that this is the last episode. Me too. Me too. Bummer. Bummer. I'm not. I can get my sleeping pattern back. Did I spell December wrong? You spelled December (laughs) really wrong. Where? Timestamp, Deember. (laughs) It's <laughs> okay. That was the entire Both movie. Aurora and I missed it. You can't point out. Blame her. And, and me. me. And I'm also dyslexic, so I use the spicy alphabet, you know? <laughs> it says December in mine. It says December in mine. Uh, oh. On page two, timestamp. Yeah, Deember. mine says December. Deember. Deember. It's convenient, Aurora. Very convenient. convenient. No, 
Timber. <laughs> Um, you correct on my page, and I didn't correct it. This hasn't been touched since I sent it. Okay, never mind. Thinks the lady doth protest too much. <laughs> you know what, guys? It's been nice. Goodbye. <laughs>